Welcome and thank you for taking the time to watch my presentation on ways in which conservators and public relations work together at the historical archive of the city of Cologne. When the historical archive collapsed due to the construction of a subway line beneath the building almost 13 years ago, our institution was in the focus of international media for the first time. A lot has happened since. The collapse led to a high demand for conservators and assistants. Today, the historical archive houses the largest workshop for paper conservation in Europe. The processing of the damage caused by the collapse still occupies us. It means that in many ways, we cannot act like a normal archive. Long before COVID-19, we had to think outside of the box in order to make the archival objects accessible again. Some of the processes and projects developed to enable this were unique in the field of preservation. Therefore, the public should not only gain insight into the archival work, but also in the preservation work. They should get to know its staff, areas of responsibility and current projects. For instance, what are typical areas of work for conservators in our archive? Or what view do conservators have of the archival records? Of course, the target group and reach of a municipal archive is different than of that of a large museum. Our viewers, visitors and subscribers mostly come from the local or professional environment. Nevertheless, we also want to convey <clears throat> knowledge about preservation in general and suggest that we're an institution open to all who are interested. So how did we interact with the public before the pandemic? Well, we house special exhibitions curated by our archivists and prepared by conservators and assistants. Under the slogan, Telling Stories, they showed both the diversity of our holdings and the results of our conservation work. Both perspectives represented equally because the stories of an archive always include the preservation history which is very much true for our institution. There's also the possibility of taking on sponsorships for archival objects. The funds raised benefit the archive and the sponsors receive a certificate and depending on the amount donated, other benefits like an exhibition catalog or guided tours or something along those lines. Which brings me to my next point. Guided tours of our workshop took place regularly. Visitors were given an insight into various archival sources, projects such as mass conservation of archival objects that had been damaged in the collapse or, in contrast, the individual conservation of sponsored objects. And finally, we organized an open house day every one to two years. On this day, visitors could come to explore our workshop and talk to staff members about their work. There were themed stands and lectures from the archival field and the field of conservation. Since 2018, this has taken place in the context of the European Day of Conservation Restoration, and thus the focus has been more on conservation. Yeah, in March 2020, COVID hit, and we, like everyone else, were suddenly cut off from direct contact with our users. Not only that, in the preceding years, in the preceding two years, we also had to focus strongly on our upcoming move into a new building. Spread over four different locations, the historical archive completed the move by the end of last year. A gigantic project that tied up a lot of resources and meant that objects were not accessible for the duration of the move. So what to do? There was a lot of interest in the move as well as in the opening of our new building and we wanted people to be part of these changes. But COVID and the preparation for the move made personal interaction almost impossible. Like many others, we came to the conclusion to expand our digital resources. 
in 2020, we held the European Day of Conservation and Restoration digitally. We recorded a podcast talking about the projects and challenges of conservation at our institution. In addition, a short film gave an insight into our premises and provided facts and figures about the preservation department. The films were uploaded on our YouTube channel and promoted on the website of the German Association of Conservatives, as well as on our website and social media channels. Then, when COVID restrictions were relaxed somewhat, it, will, it was also possible to give the public insight into the highlights of our everyday work via television reports. For example, in 2020, the emergency container of the emergency network of Cologne archives and libraries was completed, which you can see uh, on the right picture. It serves as a mobile workplace that can be transported directly to places where cultural property needs to be recovered in the event of a disaster. In order to communicate this new concept even to young children, we shot a feature for the children's program Wissen macht A, which translates uh, like uh, knowledge makes you go ah. Like, ah. <laughs> When the flood disaster hit Western Germany in the summer of 2021, the emergency container came into use much faster than we had hoped. This operation was also closely followed by the local and national press. In September last year, because of COVID, we were unable to celebrate the completion of the move and the opening of our new building to the extent we had hoped. But again, Small guided tours for the press and the public, as well as our YouTube channel, gave us the opportunity to share pictures of the new building and our conservation workshop with everyone. But it was not only the preservation department that broke new ground during COVID, but also our colleagues in other departments. Even before the pandemic, user inquiries were largely pro processed online. With the onset of the pandemic, however, they also switched to recording po and posting presentations on various topics online. A conference was streamed via YouTube and the archive stories, stories which are short videos on the archives areas of responsibility were made. Last but not least, an exhibition was designed both for in-person and online. So let's take a closer look on our Facebook page, because in this area, public relations, archivists and conservators work closely together. Since the end of 2019, there's been a permanent editorial team consisting of colleagues from different departments that plans and posts for each week. The aim is to cover both archival and preservation topics in equal measure. And because social media offers the best opportunity to receive and evaluate direct feedback from the public, I would now like to go into more detail about our posts on pay Facebook. First, I must bore you with some statistics just to get you some context. Our subscribers on Facebook are men and women, mostly aged between 30 and 60. About 50% come from Cologne and the surrounding area, and approximately 30% of the historical archives posts come from the preservation department. These posts of the preservation departments reach an average of 2,030 people. With our posts, we want to cover current topics as well as give a look behind the scenes of preservation and other areas of the archive in general. Examples of daily topics in the past year included the emergency management mentioned before, regular updates on the preparation and implementation of our move and insights into in-house projects, but also more general topics regarding object and material science, typical damage on objects, conservation methods and preventive conservation were covered. When writing Facebook posts or like any post for social media, it is always important to bear in mind that the target group is not professional colleagues, but interested lay people. So 
complex issues must be brief and understandable without further background knowledge, but should not, on the other hand, be oversimplified. This is not an easy balancing act. In principle, it can be said that the topics are best received when people have a connection to them. Thus, all our contributions on the move were followed with great interest. People were amazed at the extent of the necessary preparations and looked forward to seeing the new building and the new workshop. The contributions on the use of the emergency container during the flood disaster were also met with great support. Surprising winners, like winners, uh, in terms of numbers or reach, however, were more general contributions on the peculiarities of Prussian fire suing and on the advantages of conservation bindings. Topics that are probably, uh, that have probably little to do with the everyday life of most subscribers, but which provide insights into the fascinating and oftentimes hidden work of conservators. They explain how objects are constructed and which ethical guidelines we follow during the conservation treatment. So long story short, what is our conclusion after two years of the pandemic? What are the lessons we have learned? Well, first of all, public relations is time consuming. You need sufficient preparation to produce high quality content. However, the effort required varies depending on the method and the content. Like a nice photo is created faster than a nice video and a short update is written faster than a subject specific text. Since we as a cultural institution nevertheless have the desire not only to show funny pictures, but above all to convey knowledge, a balance must be found between effort and benefit. Interdisciplinary cooperation and feedback from colleagues are indispensable here. And of course, as mentioned before, communication must be appropriate to the target group so that the content, content can be understood. We see time and again that the pub public are just as enthusiastic about conservation topics as our professional colleagues, as long as the topics are explained in an understandable way. People want to know how we work behind closed doors. They appreciate our work and they want to participate. Last but not least, interacting with the public means facing up to new exciting questions and getting people interested in one's own work. By sharing our knowledge, <clears throat> we ensure that more and more people develop an awareness of our cultural heritage and the role of conservators in its preservation. It opens up new perspective, it stimulates creativity, and to be honest, is a lot of fun. So what happens next? What are our plans for the future? What do we want to maintain after the pandemic? Well, our future plans are lofty, of course. We want to combine the best of both worlds. The past two years have made it clear to us once again that digital offerings are a great way to be inclusive. In order to reach a younger target group, we want to expand our social media accounts to include, for example, Instagram. Also, the digital channels should support our events in the future. Events such as exhibitions and guided tours or talks are to be announced via our social media accounts. Presentations shall continue to be recorded and made available online. In accordance with the wishes of the public, we made a little survey. We will be preparing tours on various topics and of the workshop guided by conservators. We will also like to further expand our collaboration with conservation students through internships and field trips. And finally, we are so much looking forward to hopefully being able to enjoy full interaction with the public again soon. So thank you for your attention and please feel free to ask or contact me if you have any further questions or comments.